Microphone check, check, one, two. <clears> hey <throat> everybody, it's me, Gray Long. This is another episode of Full Stack Distributed Systems. Alright, we got some exciting things going on today. Uh, first off, we're going to keep working on our neural network. Sorry, I got distracted there for a moment. We're going to keep working on our neural network, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Uh, it's great to get this neural network into a game engine, and then I, we're going to, after we build the neural network, we're going to integrate it back into the game engine, and then the war game engine that we've been building is going to use the AI in order to make decisions about which attacks it should use, whether or not it should move, etc., etc. And once we simulate that in the console, we'll start getting objects out on the screen. And since we'll be using events, the visual uh, game objects can simply subscribe to those events and then move their positions on the board accordingly. You see where I'm going with this? We're going to have the AI drive everything, but first we need to create this uh, core AI engine that's going to do all the uh, topology and weight evolving artificial neural network building. And uh, in order to see the progress with our neural network building, we're going to actually graph it. Okay, and my vision for this is, right now I have code in mind to write a sort of uh, text-based description format of a graph. and. Uh, this is graph format, it's like a DOT format, and you can feed it into DOT format readers and it'll draw a graph for you and it's beautiful, blah 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 blah. What I want to do in Unity is I want to take that same format and I want to make a translator that'll translate that into uh, 2D UI widgets. Uh, there are some free uh, available uh, like panel widget type of packages available in the Unity assets. Oh, it's got to chill. Uh, and we're going to go that, we'll, we'll, we'll use those to build our graph node tree on the screen and then we'll be able to see the AI light up, right? So we have so much work to do. <laughs> but we're going to keep chugging along, keep listening to some crazy music, um, keep writing some AI and some game engines. And uh, speaking of which, before we uh, get too far into it, uh, we got some exciting news. First off, uh, thank you so much to our newest patron, the legendary slow fuse Jason Craze himself so uh, thank you so much Jason for becoming a patron on Patreon uh, I hope that you continue to enjoy my content and uh, all the things that we'll make uh, on the stream here for patrons to check out so thanks again for your support it means a lot I really appreciate it I've uh, enjoyed your stream for a long time and uh, we also got some new followers up top we got Jared Case we got Eddie Vaughn uh, we got next level painting. Everybody, thank you so much for following. It really means a lot. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this content. So, all right. Let's get into our Visual Studio protocols here. Fantastic. Start the tunes. And now we get into it. Oh, that sucked. Things might be a little glitchy today, ladies and gentlemen. Because Unity is still performing its resurrection protocols. All right, so we have the static method here called build DOT graph. It's going to take as an input two parameters, a neural network and a file, a file name. So we're gonna make a string builder. We're gonna calculate the minimum weight. And we're going to start uh, using our string builder to build the string. Now, this is a lot easier than trying to pass uh, a bunch of ridiculous Raw strings around and then try to use the uh, you know operators on them to build strings. That's not the best way to do that for this scenario. This scenario we're building a fairly complicated string because the string that we build is actually going to be interpreted by a graph reading library in order to build a graph out of it, right? So, all right. So the first thing we're going to do, we have a uh, oof, we love our complexity, don't we? We need to figure out a way to factor this, but right now we have nested four each loops. So for each receptor, we're going to spin through the receptors, and for each receptor, for each neuron in that receptor, uh, where uh, the input synapses exist, and the input equals the receptor, right, so we're, we're actually selecting what we want here, based on the receptor at our, right here. Now we can see that a little bit better. So once we have that object in our hand, we're going to get that weight. 
right? And then we're going to use our string builder to append uh, the appropriate information to it. So what we see is we're going to have uh, a prefix R for receptors. We're going to get the receptor type name, okay? Uh, we don't want the fully qualified type, or maybe we do in the future. I'm just getting the name right now. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll give me the fully qualified name. We'll find out. Uh, that's not my intent. My intent is to get the short name, so if that's a bug, we'll fix it. And then we'll get the hash code. Now, we haven't actually implemented any unique hashing algorithms yet in our classes, so we're going to rely on the default implementation, but, you know, I think probably want to think up a good hashing algorithm for ourselves if it makes sense. And I think for this it is going to make sense to have um, a hashing algorithm. I think it's going to involve a GUID, probably. Why? I don't know. I'm just being creative. So you might be going, ah, that's going to be stupid. Well, maybe. Maybe it'll be awesome. If it's stupid, we can refactor it. We'll get rid of it. It doesn't matter. We're not married to the code. If it's awesome. Maybe it'll be innovative. Maybe other people think, hey, this is a good idea. It's a great way to do this. You never know. So, now we need to do the uh, neurons. So we've done the receptors. Now we need to spin through the neurons. So we're going to do oof, another very complex loop. I went through and I uh, pruned <laughs> some of the songs off this playlist. Ooh, it's chilly out today, ladies and gentlemen. We just had the first day of uh, summer, but it's kind of chilly out. So I like doing these videos out here. Okay. Ooh. We actually we're gonna call this near on one. We're gonna need we're gonna need to think of uh, some better names for these. You know what? We want the, uh, the input synapses. Uh, synapses. Synapses? How do. There we go, synapses. And just ask for clarity. So, what are our rules for picking a synapse? There we go. Had a bug in me on code. <laughs> no, I think we're missing an outer, yeah. Oh, there we go. Sheesh. 
So let's actually call this. We're gonna call it outer neuron. Uh, we're gonna rename this control uh, control R control R. We're gonna call this uh, outer neuron. You can see it in the editor. Well, editing. We're gonna call this inner neuron. There we go, now we're getting clever. Fantastic, that's a little bit better. Does that look better? Yeah, that's better, it's a little easier to read. Watchability's important. All right, so now we need to wait. Oh, I do love VAR. So our weight is going to be based on our inner neuron. Pretty similar. We're going to get the input synapses. We're going to find... God damn, I love programming. Uh, so we're going to pass in the synapse. We're going to call it uh, S. And then with each S, we're going to... What are we gonna do? What the fuck are we gonna do? Why are you swearing? You're saying fuck all the time. Yeah, I fucking say fuck a lot. That's what the fuck I do. Alright? Don't you fucking know? <laughs> I'm having a conversation uh, in my imagination with somebody obviously close to me. <laughs> Alright, so. We're gonna find the input that equals the outer neuron again, right? Right, right. And then what are we gonna do with it? Oh yeah, we want the weight. Duh. Give me the weight, stupid. Give me the weight, stupid. That's my impression of Rich Voss. <laughs> it's very easy to do. Anybody can do it. Alright, need to append a line. What are we gonna append? You know what? I don't want to. Just gonna. We're gonna have to make a method because. Let's see. Inner neuron. And let's just. Um, Create this stub real quick. I'm trying to have a Visual Studio here generated for me. Where are you? You didn't do what you're supposed to do, Visual Studio. All right, come on. here we go. Generate that for me. Yep, it's generating. Come on, come on. There we go. And we're just going to call this Neuron. And... Ugh, Neuron looks just like a, so weird. Weird to look at. Okay. So we'll implement that later. Uh, for now, we need to build this wacky goddamn strip. Okay, so we're... Again, we're building a DOT or dot graph, so... Uh, let's see. Probably get the neuron name for what is this? The uh, inner neuron here? Yeah, about the inner neuron. Alright. Oh, right. Alright, this is gonna be. This is gonna be a pain in the ass. Let's do this. There we go. Now we need the uh, we need the weight, obviously. Uh, just trying to make my head hurt. I'm trying to remember how to do this. 
<laughs> I hope I get it right. Uh, did I grab a min weight somewhere? Ah, oh, I did. Fantastic. Oh, wait. That sounds right. Definitely call two string on that. That's gonna be ridiculous. And then, uh, uh, we want some colors on here. We want some, we want like precision, right? So, and then replace. Oh, this is gonna get messy. I'm sorry, folks. separated graph. <laughs> Let's take this comma, place it with a uh, period. And then, why don't we... Oh, this is an inappropriate thing here. Okay, and now we replace that. Let's, um... Oh, you know what? Let's color the thing, right? Let's add red and blue to do our signaling. I need to add. Oh God, how do I do this? I need to escape it. With that. So that I can do this. There we go. And let's do a quick little bit of inline logic. So, do a little ternary expression here. So, if the weight, what do we want? If it's, uh, let's say if it's greater than zero, that's going to be red. Else, uh, if it's less than zero, we're doing blue, right? So reds are positives, uh, blues are negatives. And what else do we need on this wacky goddamn string? need to terminate this color string, so, uh, it'd be easier just to, uh, sometimes you do things the, the long, stupid way here. What are you going to do, you know? Alright, so, we need to, uh, escape this beast again. We got that, alright. Now we're going to need to close our string. Uh, there we go. Great. So that was kind of messy. Um, let's implement get neuron name real quick. So what do we want? How am I doing on time? All right. I had some technical difficulties earlier, of course. The difficulty being the Visual Studio was crashing, OBS was crashing, VLC was crashing, Unity was crashing, Chrome was crashing. <laughs> I was like, oh, what's the core common shared element here? Oh, the operating system. So I had to reboot it. Alright. So anyway, let's implement this. So we're getting a neuron and we want to prefix this with a and right. And what else do we want in here? Uh, we're at the distance. Distance in the string. Say neuron dot. Should be a distance, right? How do I not have a distance on my neuron type? Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have to go. Uh, we're gonna have to fix that. You know, I only 
down as a, or is everything weighted, but they have, you know, distances. They need to travel. The goddamn hash code. Did I forget to implement that? Neuron. Let's go. That's F12, this beast. F12 on type Neuron. Did I forget something? Let's go check out our network nodes. I did. So... There we go. Yeah, we'll be using that field later, but for now, there we go. Okay. Alright, now I need to get the effectors. Alright, so what do we have so far on our graph? We have, uh, Let's, let's do some good developer due diligence commenting here. Alright, so we're going to graph the receptors. Graph the neurons. Object, give me all your effectors. All your effectors that belong to me. That's a bad, bad joke, bad meme joke. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Grab our string builder. There's a, a dad joke beam abuse. Oh, I'm glad I have to write this code again. some sirens. Oh yeah, I should be able to just, uh, if all of my transform so we're gonna return a new neuron Shit. 
don't think this is the right approach. We don't want to do this. You know what? We're, we're not going to do this. We're going to just get an effector name. Let's generate this method. Effector has what? Does it have is it neuron? Okay, so here's We actually don't need to do this. What we can do we'll get neuron name. Because basically the effector is just an envelope for a neuron. Why don't we There we go. Wait, what? One of these fields I can definitely, okay. Uh, don't freeze on me now, Visual Studio. What are you doing? Oh, shit. Oh. My big sausage fingers accidentally uh, pulled up the dialogue. All right, so to do... Maybe a bug. Um, I don't feel good about this. Wait a minute, let's just double double check. Neuron and input. Let's see neuron. I computing node. Oh no. Need to rename this file. There we go. Oh, we move back around this already? It's weird. Okay. Let's go back to our. Uh... Ah! <laughs> back to our bet network builder. I don't need to do any of this ridiculous casting. This, I should actually get, be able to get to the neuron here. Current neuron. There we go. Good. No new code to write. String Builder. String Builder. Uh, and what do you want to do? Well, I think we just did uh, curly brace. Okay, let's write all text. And we will give it string builder. Okay. 
Boom. That's how we graph the neural network. Pretty easy. So let's just double check this. Uh, okay. About halfway done with the show. Not that I want to end. Just trying to time it so we cover everything we need to cover in an hour. And we're right on schedule. So I'm very happy to be here. I, I noticed that my uh, my language is very blunt and direct and enough to make people uncomfortable. So I just could be a little, uh, you know. Anyway, let's do a little refactoring on this. I don't like having code be all gnarly. So let's do a control uh, control period, I think. Oh, yeah, we want to extract the method. Let's extract this. We will call this uh, Build uh, center. There we go. Nice. We'll call it that real easy. Let's do the same thing here. Get control period. Extract method. Pop up. Click on that. We're gonna call this. That's why we commented this, so we can follow our. Uh, we're gonna call this build neurons graph segment. Okay, and we should just be consistent because uh, we want clean code. So. I mean, also, this, is, this makes it really easy to maintain in the future because even though our method to build effectors graph segment is small, doesn't mean we can't expand it in the future, right? So now, let's make sure all our work is saved and we should be able to read this and see exactly what's going on. So, we're going to build our dot graph, and in our hands we're going to hold a neural network type object named network, and a string type object named file. So we're going to instantiate a new string builder, and we're going to calculate the minimum weight um, by getting the absolute value of the um, lowest uh, weight in all of the synapses in the network, right? So, that lambda type expression there should be pretty easy to understand so math.absolute get the network .syntapses find the minimum uh, value for each synapse uh, weight field property so take our string builder we'll penny line digraph neural network we'll open it up then we'll graph the receptors with our build receptors graph segment and that'll pass in our network and our string builder Graph the neurons with build neurons graph segment. We'll pass in our network, our string builder, and our minimum weight. We'll graph the effectors with build effectors graph segment with our network and our string builder. And we'll close out the string builder. The string builder dot append uh, closing brace. And now uh, we'll write that out to the file that we pass in. Right? So that will be good. And so one of the things we can do with this. You know, if we think back to the way our, our UI is set up in Unity, you can imagine your, your classical type of uh, dialogue popping up where we give it a file name and uh, we check to see if it already exists. If we want to write it or suggest a new file name, you know, we'll be good citizens of the file system. We don't want to just thrash everything indiscriminately overwriting files <laughs> uh, unless we want the, uh, the user to turn that ability on, right? But anyway, you can imagine if we have a UI for this that We'll have a file path, file explorer, and we'll put in a file name. Uh, we'll just make it default relative to the path of the game, or the, you know, the, the binary of the application. And then um, we'll go ahead and we'll write this file out to it, and then you'll be able to see it. And, uh, you know, basically, 
this graphed network. Here, let me let me think about this for a second. How I want to explain this to you. There's a bigger vision here. Okay. So there's a bigger vision here. So if we have these neural networks graphed out, if we have these neural networks graphed out in files. Oh, my face is getting fat. Oh, yeah. If we have these neural networks graphed out in files, we can do all sorts of beautiful things like push them up to S3 buckets, push them to another service to be drawn out, consume them in the UI. You know, we have, not only that, but we have, as an artifact, the result of our AI's work, right? Because this graph file that we graph can either be, we could do all sorts of crazy things. We can graph it at each step of the uh, network's evolution, so then you can actually make an animation out of the graph expanding and mutating, or we could just capture the final state and that could be like the solution. So then we can train other neural networks to try to match that solution. And you can go as deep down the fucking rabbit hole as you want to go. Okay, that's what's so crazy about this. We can invent applications for this all day. And I've driven myself a bit mad thinking about them. <laughs> so we're going to continue building our neural network and we'll get right back into it. So what do we need to do next in our neural network? That's it. That's it. Our neural network builder is done. So. We probably need to take a closer look at our neural network class because there's definitely uh, some not implemented <laughs> exceptions going on there, right? So why don't we take a look at that? And. Oh, maybe not neural network. Maybe uh, I'm thinking neuron. Yes, Neuron. Let's go take a look at our Neuron. We, have a, we haven't even like done the neuroevolution algorithm yet, so we have to get all these building blocks built before we can start building and plugging them into our neuroevolution algorithm. It's, oh, it's exciting, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait to show it to you. <laughs> uh, that sounds creepy. Anyway... So, let's see, we have our neuron. Right, so... Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to do some shit. Do you want to implement this interface? What are we missing? Oh, we're actually not... We're missing exactly what I thought we'd be missing, so that's good. That also means that... We actually can make this private again. Actually, we don't. Uh, we're just going to leave this as is. I'm not going to... That's not the point of what we should be working on right now. <laughs> anyway, Neuron should implement an iComputing node, which, that makes sense. So, we have our proper constructors, right? We have all the constructors that we need. No, we have not all the constructors. So the way... Okay, so... I can't just assume that you read... Uh, of, you know, Gene Share's textbook on neuroevolution. <laughs> uh, especially since it was all written using Erlang. And while I love Erlang, and I would by no means profess to be expert at it, I have used it. I do enjoy it, and it is challenging. And this motherfucker wrote an entire engine like what we're doing right now. Not a game engine, but a neuroevolution framework in Erlang. And while I would love to walk through it and basically recreate his textbook in the language that he wrote it in. Uh, I think that audience is going to be a little more limited. So this one has a little more broader appeal because we're building a game engine, I would think. And, uh, it's in C-sharp, which is a little more accessible, a little more
more legible to the new developer than the esoteric and cryptic arcane syntax of Erlang. Alright, so... And, okay, so anyway, the way his, his algorithm works is... Uh, basically, we might have to build uh, these different nodes with various parameters. Sometimes the parameters are empty, sometimes they're not. And, uh, yeah. but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it's easier to just see it as a code that unfolds than to waste your time babbling on and on and on like a fucking asshole. So, we got that, uh, oh, we need another constructor right here. Remember, we just did the minimal amount of work earlier to get pieces needed that we needed to work. So, far again. Same thing. We could actually make a type alias for that, probably, I think. I haven't made type alias. I don't think I've made type alias. Ah. I thought about using I innumerable, but nah. Alright, so this is actually the constructor. it up to uh, this bad boy up here. Pass in our activation funk. Funk. Uh, synapse to the current neuron. And this is going to be, this is how you build the neuron on the very first layer. Right? You see what I mean? So, instead of having to, when we go to use our algorithm, instead of having to pass in a zero, we could just pass in our activation function a list of uh, synapses. And guess what? We can get even crazier. What if we have a neuron with only an activation function? Now what the fuck are you going to do? Huh? Oh, actually, we don't need to... Representation of how to construct neurons and gene shares uh, algorithms there. So basically, we could have a neuron. We could specify an activation funk, synapses, and a layer. Um, I want to rename that. Uh, Control RR. Let's call this input synapses. And you know what? What I actually want to do here. Wait a minute. 
No, we're not gonna fuck around there right now. We'll leave it as is. Okay, so now we got the right constructors. Now we need to, uh, how do you reset a, a neuron? Well, you don't throw a not implement the exception, that's just stupid. <laughs> uh, where am I? Let me collapse these. This is a good use of a, of a region. I'm gonna call this, uh, neuron constructors. Good. So why don't we just collapse this? Okay, good. <laughs> so how do we reset a neuron? Well, we gotta, whatever we calculated has to be thrown out the fucking window, right? Wait a minute. Uh, let me see this. auto-generated right there we go okay so that should work that's what we want fantastic that makes more sense Let's see now actually why don't we just take this ah see how I have the collapse region it's so easy let's move these right here and uh, let's collapse them again there we go fantastic see that easy to move code when it's in regions. All I had to do was uh, select and cut the region. Okay, so let's do this reset method. some stuff here. Let's do a private uh, calc related compute. What else do we need? It's either looping or it's not. Oh, we already have that. Of course, looking at it. <laughs> All right, good. That's it. That's all we have time for today, ladies and gentlemen. It's a little bit short today, but uh, let's just do a recap. We went through and we, uh, excuse me, we went through and we graphed our neural network into a file. We have some big plans for that, and now we're going to flesh out our neuron and we're going to work on the rest of our computing nodes. And once we have all these kind of outer components that we need, these base components, we're going to go ahead and implement our neuroevolution algorithm. Okay, so that's it. Uh, thank you so much for 
checking out this video today and following along and supporting me and everything else that you guys are doing. I can't do these videos without you guys, so thank you so much for your time and your dedication, and I really appreciate it. Alright guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.